Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Jaime and I'm the proud owner of a social media marketing agency transforming e-commerce brands into market leaders. What I wanna do in this video is talk a bit about my story and give you guys my hot take on dropping out of college. Now, the reason why I'm putting together this video is because, you know, obviously taking a look at my channel analytics and then taking a look at my audience, I know that most of you are in the 18 to 26 uh, years, years old uh, demographic and I know that a lot of you are stuck in college. And look, I know for a fact, uh, because this was me, College is not the ideal uh, you know, environment for an entrepreneur. And most of you watching this channel, you're probably looking to create your own business, to create a little side hustle, and you have this entrepreneur fire within you, right? So I wanna share with you guys my experience uh, of dropping out of the top 10 ranked university in the world, share with you what I was thinking, what led me to take that decision. And finally, at the end of the video, give you guys my personal recommendation as to what you should probably do in different scenarios. Now, do bear in mind, this is not me saying, hey, do this, right? This is just a recommendation the way I see it. If you guys are in the position of where I was before dropping out of college. So very excited for this video. And without further ado, let's get right into it. As always, I've got my notebook and I've divided the video into three main sections. In the first section, I'm gonna talk about the seesaw, okay? a very cool concept that I've actually applied in all areas of my life. The second thing is my big realization. And uh, this you know, actually changed my life, uh, realizing this. And I realized this during my time at uh, college and in, in university. And the final thing is the pain. So I'm gonna talk about the pain and uh, what you should do if you experience this, the same pain that I was uh, experiencing uh, going through uh, college. The first section is the seesaw. Now, the first thing that I wanna say is I think there's a ton of value in burning the boats. If you guys are not familiar with this term, essentially what it means is having no backup option, right? I'm not gonna tell the whole story on where it comes from. You guys can do your own research. It goes back to the conquistadors. Uh, but basically, when you burn the boats, it means that there's no backup option. You, you, you really don't have much to fall back on, okay? Yeah, sure, sure, there's always a, a backup option. Sure, there's always a, a plan B, but it's not great, okay? So you're literally burning the boats and you're putting your, your back against the wall. And I think there's a ton of value in that. And I'm constantly doing that in my, in my own life because th that, that is by far the, the one thing that gets you to take the most action when you know that you've got to make this work. And if not, things are not going to be great for you. I think it incites a lot of action. But at the same time, I do believe that you can be smart about it, okay? And what I did is, yes, I burned the boats. Yes, I put myself at my back against the wall, but I was also smart about it. And the way I was smart about it is that I had a track record. I had a bit of a proof of concept. And that is what I recommend you guys do before taking the leap and maybe dropping out of, of college, maybe quitting your nine to five, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why I say that is because if you've got no track record, if you haven't gotten started, right? If, you, if you're not, for example, making money, which is a bit of a proof of concept, right? Then you can't go from zero to a hundred, right? You can't go from doing nothing to all of a sudden becoming this successful entrepreneur as soon as you drop out of college, right? So what I recommend you guys do is first put in the work, see the, the results that are coming back, see whether you actually enjoy it, right? Start getting a few results, right? Obviously you're not gonna get the same results that you're gonna get once you go full in, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but start getting a few results and start, start getting a bit of a proof of concept. And the reason why this is, is because it's gonna build a lot of confidence within you and it's gonna give you that proof of concept. In my case, for example, I knew I needed that proof of concept for my parents to actually allow me to drop out of, uh, out of college. I think they would've allowed me regardless, right? But it did reduce a bit of the tension. There was still tension, right? I and mean, it, was it still wasn't great those first few months. But then knowing that number one, I'd been building myself for around two years at that point, even three years since I was 16, right? Reading books and, you know, uh, you know, taking courses, running myself with uh, great mentors, starting up things. I started a, an e-commerce clothing brand when I was 16. So I was doing stuff, right? Uh, and they knew that I was this relentless person that yes, it was scary for them, uh, for me to not have a, um, a, a university uh, degree, right? But I truly believe that they knew I was gonna make it work, right? Uh, they still had that doubt, but the track record really helped with that. So what I recommend you guys do, and coming back to the seesaw uh, concept, right? You wanna treat it as a seesaw. And what I mean by that is, Basically, you want to have, for example, you've got college on one side and you've got SMMA or whatever you want to do on the other side, right? And at first, you want to go around 50-50, maybe 60-40 um, with college, right? Uh, then, you know, see how you like it and then turn it into 50-50 and then start investing more time into your uh, side hustle, right? Start investing around 60-40. And the reason why you want to do that is because I'm assuming, if you're watching this video, right, that college is not for you, right? That college is not something that makes you passionate, right? So start investing a bit more time into your side hustle. Uh, and if you start seeing results, right, at 60, 40, then invest even more time and even more time and even more time. And that's what I did, right? It got to a point where it was around 90 my side hustle and 10% my um, my uh, university degree, right? And so at that point, it just became very apparent that I just had to go full in, right? But it was progressive. It was a progressive, you know, 60, 70, uh, 80, 90, right? Until I, I, did, I just went 100% in. 
Make sense? But I don't recommend you guys go from, you know, 100% college to then 100% uh, your side hustle because there's no track record and you haven't built yourself up. There's no proof of concept. So that's really the first thing that I want you guys to keep in mind, uh, really for life, but also in this situation uh, where you're thinking of dropping out of college. The second thing is my big realization. And this was the most powerful uh, motivator for me to actually take the action. And basically what I came to realize after doing a lot of reflecting, because just to give you guys a bit of a, an idea, I planted the seed of dropping out, I think like as soon as I started my first year, um, because before that I had kind of like a foundation year in uh, this one university in, in the UK, and then I moved to uh, UCL in London. I had this, the seed planted in, in, in my head of, of dropping out, uh, but I literally had like five months of, of reflecting on the idea, right? Where I was still working on my business, but I'm, I was constantly, you know, going back and forth uh, in my head of, you know, should I do it, should I not, right? And it got to a point where I, I, I'm not sure what happened, but but it got to a point where I just realized that my actions were not congruent to uh, the results and what I wanted out of life. Basically, what I came to realize is that the path that I was currently in, which was you know going down the college route and spending three years of my life without doing much, right, just getting grades for the sake of getting grades, uh, which is pretty, it's, it's actually mind-boggling uh, to think about. That that was not going to lead me to the result and and the desired outcome that I wanted in my life, right? Sure, I could trick myself into thinking that I'm actually building my business and I'm making progress, but um, one of the things that I came to realize is, and this is a bit of a side tangent, but when I went full in, the progress that you think you were making when you were at uni and, and doing both things, compared to the progress that you make when you're just, you're, you're so focused and attention goes to that one thing, is honestly uncomparable. Like, you know, one is here and the other one is here, right? I could make a whole video on that, but coming back to my point, I just basically realized that my ambitions were not congruent to the actions that I was taking to get there, right? And so when I realized that, and, and it seems very simple, right? But it's an internal battle that I think you have to go through and that everyone has to go through and just really reflecting is, is what I'm doing currently congruent to what I want out of life, right? I'm constantly asking myself this question, even to this day, right? Is what I'm currently doing, is shooting this video on a Saturday morning, is that congruent to where I want to be in life, right? To where I want to be in five years, 10 years, right? 20 years, my grand life mission. Is that congruent to my ambitions, my goals, my aspirations? If the answer is yes, continue doing that. If the answer is probably no, then why keep lying to you, right? Why keep going down that path if it's not gonna make you happy? Just because society tells you, probably not a good idea, right? So when I made that realization, it just wasn't a question anymore, right? One of the things that also really helped me is I recommend that if you, for example, have an ideal lifestyle, right? And maybe someone that you look up to has that ideal lifestyle and is doing what you wanna do, right? Take a look at their journey. Do a bit of research into the, the journey of the people that you uh, that are inspired by, that, that you look up to, right? If you look up to Elon Musk or Bill Gates or you know all these amazing people, but also people that are a bit lower than them, right? In, in terms of success, take a look at what they did to get there and then mimic their path. When I did that, I realized that the big rewards that they had experienced in life was down to them having taken big risks, right? Those risks could have been uh, dropping out of uh, college. Those risks could have been, uh, you know, leaving their nine to five. Whatever it was, the commonality was that they all took big risks. And sure, I can mitigate the risk, like I just told you guys, using the seesaw pre uh, principle, but you can't make it disappear. So it gets to a point where you have to take the risk. You have to take that leap forward. And that is how you get results. That is how you get the big rewards. It sounds cliche, but usually the size of the risk is correlated to the size of the reward. So that's really the second thing that I want you guys to keep in mind. And the, the kind of the, the realization that I had and also to trace the journey that people that you look up to have taken and then mimic that, right? And realize that you have to take a uh, risk and you have to take that leap forward. Yes, you can mitigate it, but you can't make it disappear. And the final thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is the pain, right? And so there's gonna be two parts of this. The first is the pain I experienced going to my college classes. And um, I can't begin to tell you just how painful it was, right? And, and it's not, obviously it's not physically painful, but it just felt like the energy was sucked out of me, right? I couldn't concentrate and, and bear in mind, I was doing an engineering degree. Uh, in the end, I, you know, my, my grades were pretty good, which I was quite uh, pleasantly surprised by, um, just simply because I wanted to end on a good note. But back in high school, I'd been the student who never struggled to actually focus in class, right? And uh, to this day, I, I don't really struggle focusing uh, on the stuff that I'm really passionate about. But the lack of focus in this college classes was on a different level. I just could not process the information that my teachers were going through. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't good, right? It was just a waste of time. And one of the things that I want you guys to realize is that if you, for example, if you go to class and you just feel like your energy is not quite there, you feel like your energy overall, right? Throughout your, your day is not quite there. Obviously it, it can be down to a lot of reasons. Like for example, what you're eating, your sleep habits, your, you know, are you exercising all that stuff? But a big component of it is just doing stuff that you love, right? When you, when you tap into your passion, into your purpose, um, and you align with what you're you're supposed to be doing, right? I mean, it might not be your life purpose, right? But what you like doing, 
the type of energy you feel is, is completely on, on a different wavelength. And the funny thing is you only realize this once you actually start working on, on what you really like, but I'm sure it's happened to you guys where when you're working on something that you really, really enjoy doing, you know, it, it can literally be 10 hours, you don't realize because you just love the thing, right? But for me, literally studying for an hour or working on a, on a paper um, uh, for my engineering courses for an hour or two hours, it seemed like a lifetime. It literally seemed like two days uh, of, of the type of work that I'm doing uh, right now. So yeah, that, that's one of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind, the fact that um, you tap into just completely different energy levels. And that is why I truly believe that it's an upward spiral when you actually focus on your passion because not only do you really enjoy, enjoy what you're doing and you're probably good at it, but you also have just insane energy levels that you can tap into to be successful with it, right? So it becomes this upward spiral where what you're doing feeds into you and you feed into your passion as well, right? So very powerful stuff. And it's one of the things that I would urge you guys to keep in mind when it comes to pursuing your passion. And the final thing that really helped me, and this is how I'll be ending this video, is visualizing the pain that I would feel if I were to finish my college journey. And I was receiving that diploma after three years. And I kept visualizing that, especially in, in, the, in the last few months um, prior to me dropping out. And it was one of the most painful things. And it wasn't even me experiencing, right? But visualization, if you guys don't know, it's, it's a very powerful thing. And the reason why it's very powerful is because your brain can't really tell between reality and your thoughts and then what you visualize in your head, right? So I would visualize myself receiving this diploma, going through the just the painful three years of not just work, but the wasted time and opportunity cost. And just seeing that image in my head was powerful enough to make me drop out. Yes, I had much more positive reasons, like working on stuff that I truly care about and then just the just the insane potential that I would be uh, tapping into when I did decide to drop out. But that was probably one of the most powerful things that um, allowed me to take that leap forward. Visualizing myself after this three year course and not having done much with, with my life, really just being very unhappy with uh, where I was at. Really just having nothing to show for it, probably being depressed, just because I decided to play it safe and to follow the society standards and uh, what my parents were telling me, right? So that's the third point. The final thing that I will say, and it's not on my notes, um, but on the parents side of things and, and just your family and stuff like that, uh, don't be mad at them for not believing in you. I feel like a lot of people have this a motivator which is proving people wrong and I, honestly i think i think that's good i think that's a powerful motivator and when you can tap into that dark energy it can really move you forward in life but uh don't be resentful i right? just understand that they don't see what you're seeing one of the things that helped me was knowing that my parents didn't know what i knew where i could go right sure you can roughly explain it to them but they didn't know my five-year plan my three-year plan my two-year plan right you uh, again you can explain it to them but they don't see the opportunity the same way that you do. So don't be resentful, understand them. Also understand that if they're angry, that's completely fine, I completely get it. You're pretty much just going against everything they believe in and maybe all they've worked for are for putting you through a, an amazing education or whatever it is, right? So understand their side and their perspective, but also understand that they don't know what you know and that you should stay true to your vision and what you know you're destined for. So that's the final thing that I will say on the topic. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and kind of my reasoning for dropping out as well as my recommendation to you. If you did drop a big thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check this out. And the final thing is if you haven't joined the free private mentor community on Facebook, the client closers, an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. We're talking e-commerce, we're talking sales and outreach, we're talking growing your agency, building your A-team and a bunch of other really, really cool and ninja hacks. So if you wanna join that, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey. And I will see you in the next one, peace.